Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. <laughs> Welcome back to another special episode of Classic Restos, filmed here in the United States of America. This return trip, a special thanks to Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote on 134646. And while you're at it, why not make sure you're a member of the Shannon's Club. Now this week's episode is a little varied, and you're about to see the first piece of today's show right after this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machinerihouse.com.au. Welcome back. Well, as I journey across the United States of America once again with Mark from Shannon's Insurance on route to San Francisco to deliver his Imperial to his shipper, the whole point of the exercise is to bring you some interesting stuff along the way. Now this afternoon we've just picked up a little piece of Route 66 just before St. Louis and I have to share this with you. Welcome to Country Classic Cars. Country Classic cars started on the farm in 94 with one car and the next thing you knew we had like six and then we had you know a dozen. Before long we had about 40 cars and we farmed two. And I told the wife in 98, I said next year let's just do the cars full time and we'll just rent the ground out. And we had two big tractors, she drove one and I drove one, and she said, that sounds good to me. So we parked the machinery in the barn and started to, up here in 90, actually we opened in 99 up here with 40 some cars and it just kind of went crazy from there. And with my good help, we're just going, moving right along. We have a little over 600. We sell anywhere from 30 to 45 a month, it's kind of up and down. Uh, we have sold as much as 52, but it's generally 30 to 45 cars a month we sell. So it's beginning to be a good problem for country classic cars, you know, because you sell that many, you gotta, gotta replace them. As you know, we had a big fire here, August the 8th, and uh, Jeff that lives in the trailer here, he called and said the main building's on fire and we could see it from our farm, which is 17 miles south. There was 143 cars that, that caught on fire and burned up in there, so it was uh, pretty rough, but we're working through it. And with my good help, we're doing fine. Well, here we have him, the man himself, the owner. Russ, pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you, Flash, and thanks for coming by here, and I really appreciate you stopping in. It's nice. That's okay. We, this is hard to put words to this. I mean, that terrible night on that Tuesday, right where we're standing, the, the terrible fire came through here. On that note too, this is probably going to be the only time ever we're going to see it like this, because pretty soon it's going to be full of cars again, right? That's right, yes, uh, actually the Amish are going to finish up tomorrow and we'll probably start putting cars in here Thursday unless we have to clean the floor, you know, and then we'll be in here probably by the end of the week. Now for inspiration, uh, if you're watching the show and you're going to build a shed, how many feet long and how many feet wide is this shed, Russ? It's 50 feet wide and 528 feet long. And the Amish put it up in three weeks and three days. Yeah, the, the, I can't believe it. They just did a super good job. The Amish do incredible work. And they turn up, they work hard, they do a full eight-hour day, don't they? 
Ten four. Whenever they're here eight hours, they're working eight. They ain't working four. They're working eight plus. Yeah. All right. Well, Russell, I wish you all the very best, and uh, that's why I'm here today because I uh, just needed to come and see this guy. I mean, I was uh, over here. Uh, one week before the fire. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Just one week later, here I was in the in the hotel room watching on the news, and it's like, oh, my goodness. You know, right. so it's great to uh, come back and just give you guys a little bit of recognition. Okay, well, thanks again for stopping, buddy. You're a good guy. <laughs> thanks, Russ. <laughs> okay, buddy, you're welcome. And whilst here at Country Classic Cars, man on a mission, Mark Beer from Shannon's Insurance. How are you, Mark? Yeah, great, Fletch. How are you? Good, good, good. Bit of cold weather's just come in. Yeah, I've got my Shannon's jacket on to keep warm. <laughs> a bit of inspiration for hot coffee, that's for sure. Now, last year, Mark, the 78 Mercury Colony Park Woody Wagon Water Drive. Yeah, it was fantastic. The car performed really well. I think you said it was like getting a pensioner out of the nursing home and asking to run around the block. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, 2017, we're doing it again. You've got yourself another acquisition. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to redrain the US of all their American cars, but... I've got a few, and uh, I guess this car's a 1971 Imperial by Chrysler. Uh, apparently it's not a Chrysler Imperial, it's an Imperial by Chrysler, and it's uh, a 440 V8, 7.2 litre. It's got a white leather interior, twin power seats, electric windows, central locking. It's the first production car, I believe, with factory anti-lock brakes, four-wheel anti-lock brakes. Yeah, it's pretty cutting-edge stuff for 1971. A little bit of uh, significance with this car too because you found something in the glove box that was interesting. Yeah, it was uh, there's some paperwork around the movie Raging Bull and Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro were ferried uh, to and from the set uh, during the making of that movie and the paperwork was in the glove box. Yeah. How cool is that? Okay, now this return trip, all these return trips to the United States, obviously, thanks to Shannon's as well, Mark. And uh, as I allude to on the episode, if you're not a member of the Shannon's Club, go online and check that out. And also, if you've got something to do with a car club as well, make sure you've got that listed on the Shannon's Club as well. Absolutely, Fletch. Everything there for the motoring enthusiast. All right. Now, talking of the motoring enthusiast, we could just keep on going here. It's endless. Uh, almost 600 cars here at Russ's place. Uh, any that have taken your eye, Mark? The one, or a few that have appealed to me, the 56 Lincoln. That's a pretty rare car these days. And uh, interesting story behind that, the designer, Bill Schmidt, uh, he designed the car. He used to do a lot of skin diving, underwater uh, sport and uh, he was inspired by the sea life so the manta ray was inspiring him to do that that design for that vehicle and he also did the Lincoln Futura which was the show car that was turned into the Batmobile so there you go. We have touched on design this trip uh, in a prior episode on this particular trip we had the privilege of interviewing Mike Simcoe president of global design for GM. Yeah that was absolutely fantastic I mean to go into uh, Harley Earl's office and uh, it's pretty well unchanged. There might be some minor changes, but you know all the furniture and all the elements are just as Harley Earl would have been in there from in the 50s. So it's pretty surreal. Good on you. I have to give you credit on that one, Mark, for organising that particular interview. Well done. Okay, that's it from Country Classic Cars here with Mark from Shannon's. And uh, well, I guess we uh, we've just got to make our way and keep on heading towards San Francisco, Mark. Absolutely, it's still a fair way to go, Fletch. Absolutely. <laughs> Stick around. There's something else interesting coming up in today's show. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Ledge. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. And with a range like this, you cannot go wrong. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps. Air compressors and different air tools. Sandblasting cabinets through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House and they're also open Saturday mornings. Their range of machine tools are workshop tested. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerymouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Alrighty, making our way into St Louis now and it's time for some more gobsmacking stuff. It's not a classic car, it's a classic 
train. It fits in perfectly within the era of ultimate designs and you're about to see it on Classic Restos. Welcome to the 1955 General Motors Aerotrain. My name is Kobe Ellison and I'm the uh, curator of collections at the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis. Uh, we're currently standing in one of the uh, cars from the Aerotrain. The Aerotrain was built in the mid 50s primarily as a way to hopefully increase the ridership and revenues for the various railroads when uh, people started taking more buses and cars the uh, ridership uh, greatly diminished. The railroads went to GM and asked them to design a train set for them uh, with the idea that uh, the futuristic design that uh, was prevalent at the time and the comfort would be there and they were lightweight and they were cheap. Uh, unfortunately one of the things that was missing was the comfort and uh, it was tried by a few railroads for a couple of years here in the United States and uh, after a while the project was abandoned. The uh, Rock Island Commuter uh, Railroad in Chicago bought the remaining two sets and they ran up through the mid 60s. Hey Kobe, how amazing is this? I mean, you know, what's behind us for decades? It's been picture book stuff to a lot of people around the world. Well, Fletch, we're fortunate that we have one of the two aero trains that still is in existence. Uh, came to the museum in the mid 60s after that program was uh, abolished and it's been here ever since. It is an attraction. A lot of people come here specifically to see the aero train. Uh, one of the first things they say when they get here is, where's the aero train? Yeah. What's amazing too is the fact that at least it was given a chance and it's a shame that it didn't evolve from this. Well I guess it did when we look at you know lo future locomotives from this point but it was very game and a very bold move I think to introduce something so space age back in the time. I agree and uh, you know one of the things that they were going for was to make things more affordable, lightweight. Uh, supposedly two of these cars behind us weighed as, uh, the same amount as one of the heavyweights that was being used at the time, right. you know. So, I mean, everything was laid out. It's just, unfortunately, uh, from the counts I've read, GM never tested it on the road in real conditions. Was it too much too early? I think it was trying to be something that it wasn't. Kobe, it's been great catching up with you. Uh, obviously, you're a busy guy. You've taken time out and uh, really appreciate your time here today to uh, fill us in and give us more information on this uh, Incredible train of yesteryear. Thanks for stopping by, Fletch. What's the go here, Mark? Got the big Imperial up in front of the even bigger Aero Train. Yeah, I guess the Aero Train uh, is definitely on the bucket list in terms of uh, amazing pieces of work, beautiful design from the 50s. Um, I guess, you know, like the Future Liner and the La Saba, some of that stuff we also saw at the GM Tech Centre, you know, I guess as a kid growing up seeing pictures of this thing, it's like out of, you know, it's from outer space basically. Yeah. It must have been amazing when this pulled into a station in you know, a regional area for people to see this. It is really quite surreal. I mean, with your 71 sitting here beside it, it's kind of a shame in a way, isn't it? You know, like that these designs, well, they're just not getting done anymore. It's, a, it's an era that's, that's a long time ago. It's never to be repeated. Yeah, and I guess that's why we travel from all the way from Australia to the US to see something like this because it, it really is something so special. All right, we hit the road. We uh, make our way on our voyage towards San Francisco. Thanks again, Mark. Thanks, Fletch. Well, here we are. You wouldn't read about it. Classic Restos, North Pole edition. I cannot believe this. This is one of the most fascinating wrecking yards that I think I've seen in my life. Yes, the snow is coming down here in, in Denver. Uh, 35 acres and 5,000 cars. That'll give you an idea. What is blowing me away with this place is that there's a little bit of plastic bumper, late model stuff, but there's a heck of a lot of classic stuff. The big stuff. All the stuff that's hard to find. There's rows and rows. It's all in sections. You've got your, you've got your Chrysler, GM, Ford. Just rows and rows of it. It is amazing. Everywhere you look, it's a sea of iron, you know. I came in here, had a quick look around, and I had to run back to the car, get the camera, because I was just so excited to actually film this and share it with you. It's just not every day you see this. Every one of these cars, once upon a time, were driven out of a dealership, and every one of these cars has their own track record of automotive history here within the United States. Every one of these cars, has a story, 
and I'm sure that every single owner that bought these cars had plenty of stories to go along with it. Making our way between Denver and Salt Lake City, there's no doubt about it, you take me to the warm spots, don't you? Well, you know, good, of, uh, good to have a variation in the landscape, I think. Hasn't it been amazing? Oh, it's been fantastic. I mean, we've travelled, gee, how many states? I'm trying to work them out in my head. Uh, Ohio, I think we went to Indiana, Illinois, Missouri. Kansas. Kansas, uh, into Colorado, and then we're now in Wyoming. It's amazing. It really is trekking across the United States now. Particular emphasis uh, on this 71 Imperial. Now, we've already done many, many hundreds of miles. This car was sitting around for many years. It seems to be running flawlessly. Yeah, I had some work done to it before we left, so I had a new radiator, or had the radiator record. Just general service, you know, the uh, fuel pump, the water pump, those, you know, belts and hoses, that sort of stuff. So give us an update. What's it like to drive? What's it like to perform, especially now in the high altitude? Yeah, I mean, it performs really well. It's a 7.2 litre 440, so it's a big block V8. Uh, it's got the, uh, you know, the torque flight transmission. So a very smooth, effortless cruising. It's got a very long wheelbase. It's the largest car Chrysler built, you know, in that year as their top of the line series. And uh, it's very comfortable, beautiful. Mark, thank you very much for the update. Let's get back in our cars where it's a little warmer uh, as we make our way to San Francisco. Thanks again, Mark. Thanks, Fletch. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Making our way across the United States of America, the trek with the 1971 440 Imperial owner, Mark Beer. How are you, Mark? Good, thanks, Fletch. That is good. To think that yesterday we we're in minus temperatures in snow, uh, we've come, what, another almost a thousand k since that point. Here we are now in uh, Nevada desert. Uh, talk about a, a transition of um, climates, landscapes. Yeah, that's the great thing about the US. Uh, you can drive through snow one day and then you're in the desert the next. Now, it's interesting to get an update on the Imperial because from the last interview, I've, as I've alluded to, we've done another 1,000 k's. Everything's still running on beautifully, isn't it? Yeah, the car's running perfectly, Fletch. Touch, I always say touch wood. Okay. Now, I think the angle which is so different and interesting with this particular segment is the fact that you are driving the car across the United States, three quarters of the way across the United States. Uh, most people get their cars that they purchase transported to their shipper, uh, myself included, that's what I'll be doing. You choose to drive, which I think uh, is an extraordinary experience that maybe not a lot of people get to do. Yeah, I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but I, I think it just adds to the the flavour of buying a car in the US, if you can actually drive it across the country, there's so much to see. Rather than paying a truck driver to just put it on the back of his truck, you can actually experience it yourself. You do have to do a lot of preparation beforehand though, make sure the major mechanical issues are sorted on the car, the hoses, the belts, the, all those sort of things. It's a 100% original car and this is what I love because these cars are just under the radar. It's not about the performance cars as I've alluded to as well with your Roadrunners and your Mustangs and your, and your Challengers. So the list goes on and on and on. What about the pillows down on the inside of the turrets in the back? Yeah, I haven't used them myself because I've been in the front seat driving. Yeah. But uh, 
Yeah, it, it's got like pillows in the C pillar for people to lean their head against. There's a little strap they can hold on to as well, just so they're in total comfort. But I guess uh, I've always liked the bigger cars. I like the muscle cars as well, but I think you get such great value. Now, this particular car of yours, Mark, as 100% original as it is, which I love, no one's got it and mucked around with it. There's no holes drilled in it. I mean, every angle of the car is technically how it left the dealership. Now, tell us the faults on this. You've got to do the vinyl roof, right? Yeah, I'm going to replace the vinyl roof. There's a little bit of rust in the C-pillar, just the back there, which I'll get that attended to. The paintwork, it needs a good polish. It's had a few scratches. Murray, uh, my mate that I bought it off, seems to have walked past with his belt buckle a few times. So, But that'll polish out fine. So the paintwork's actually quite good on it. New vinyl roofs, just some minor rust repairs. Mechanically, you know, the car is running like a top. They talk about structure and build quality from the 1970s. This car is as straight as a die. The panel gap is amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's the top of the range vehicle from Chrysler. So obviously they put more attention, and more focus on the quality of the product. And I think that's also a testament to the fact that the car's, you know, well over, what, 46 years old and it's still running beautifully along the highway. All right, thanks again, Mark. We'll continue to move west to meet the shipper in San Francisco, and I hope you're really enjoying this particular segment of Classic Restos. Well, here we are, moving right along. We're in California, and San Francisco is virtually just up the road. So, this is a chance for me to bring you some amazing stuff. Some of the Golden Gate Bridge, perhaps some Alcatraz. How about the sensational streets of San Francisco with all their trolley cars? The home of Steve McQueen's iconic smash hit from 1968, Bullet. But no, instead, I bring you this. And why would I bring you anything else? Welcome to Turner's Wrecking Yard in Fresno. Some people enjoy visiting graveyards, but this is a visit to a graveyard of a different kind. We saw Greg's Wrecking Yard back in Denver this trip, and Greg's yard was an incredible 36 acres. Now, not that it's a competition, it's about quality, not quantity, right? But here at Turner's, again, there's a lot of classic iron to drool over as you try and get around more than 70 acres of these convalescing storytellers. Yes, if you're going to have the car yard disease, you might as well get it good. Turner's is a marketplace for antique classic cars, trucks and parts from 1928 through to present day. There's over 10,000 cars in stock and they ship worldwide. I opened up in 1961. We started out with about four or five acres before we got it. Uh, the fence built around it, we'd outgrown it. Uh, this, we've had this property since 1932 and uh, so my dad said, well, this should be enough. I said, yeah, probably. And like I say, before we got the fence built, we'd outgrown it. So then I bought 20 acres more from my dad. Prison, we filled it up. I bought 20 acres more from him. We filled that up. I bought 20 acres across the street to the west. We filled that up. I bought 10 acres to the east. And that's where we stand now with a uh, little less than 100 acres on the total. We just buy local. We won't go probably 25, 30, 40 miles, the furthest we'll ever go to tow cars in. Uh, they've just always come to us on the phone. I've always told people, if you like junk and you stay in one spot all your life, you can accumulate an awful lot. And I was four years old. We moved to this ranch in 1932. We ship parts basically all over the world. Uh, we ship an awful lot to New Zealand, to Australia, uh, and the Baltic countries. Shipping is now a fairly big part of our business, whereas 25 years ago we wouldn't have known how to ship. I've always considered myself to be very fortunate. Uh, I've always done what I wanted to do. Uh, I've played with airplanes, motorcycles, race cars, and boats virtually all my life, and I've never been hurt. Well, we've had a chat with Jerry Turner, and here's the younger brother, Dave. How you doing, Dave? I'm fine. Still vertical, so I'm in good shape. That's good. Now, you're the younger one, right? I am. Yeah. I am. By 10 years. 
and how you're holding up. I can't be complaining. I get wake up in the morning and the day's good. <laughs> yeah, and you come to the wrecking yard, right? Well, I come. He's got the wrecking yard. I got the polishing shop. So I, I just come down here. I get six hours a day. Yeah. I'm retired. Yeah. I used to work heavy equipment construction. So. Yeah. And what sort of a lifestyle is it for you, Dave? When you turn up here, uh, do you ever get tired of the place? No, this is fun for me. Mm. It keeps me out of trouble, and it's it's enjoyable. I like to take some of the pieces that these people bring me that uh, they're ready to throw away, and then I get to fix them and mm. make people happy. Do you often look back over the decades and remember some of the cars that you've seen pass through here, and do you kind of feel sort of like, oh, I wish I'd kept that car now? Uh, definitely, definitely. My first car was a 37 Ford Phaeton. That was now 1955 or 56. I've had some good ones. All right, good on you, Dave. You take care. I will. I'll do the same. You do the same. Well, how's this? Mark, congratulations. We made it. Finally. At Interglobal Logistics here at San Leandro. Yep, uh, it's nice to finally arrive. It's a, it was a pretty big trip, but the car performed faultlessly. We have been going for days and days, a couple of weeks, and uh, this Imperial, I can't speak highly enough of it. You can't say you've done the trip until you've got there, right? Because you, you can go along saying, oh, it's running well, it's running well, but until you get to your final destination, and that's exactly what the car has done. I mean, the engine, the transmission, the brakes, everything, the steering, it performed like a gem. It was really fantastic. Now, Mark, it's, uh, you, apparently you, you're in good hands here. Now, Gabriel, now you've put a lot of cars through this guy. Tell us quickly about Gabriel. Yeah, I mean, I ship my cars out of the US back to Australia through uh, Interglobal Logistics, and uh, Gabriel always looks after me, and uh, also Dave King from American News. So those guys together do a great job. That's such an important aspect of getting in a car and getting it back home I think it's probably one of the biggest nightmares a lot of people worry about so when you you find someone good obviously repeated business as well uh, yeah well you know you're in good hands yeah I mean after driving it such a long distance I want to make sure that the car is looked after so that's why I use those guys absolutely absolutely okay Mark well um, what do we say from this point I mean over two and a half thousand miles it's been fantastic Fletch so thanks very much it's been a great trip Thank you. And Mark, again, uh, this uh, trip not possible without the support of Shannon's Insurance, this batch of episodes. Thanks to Shannon's. And uh, make sure you're a member of the Shannon's Club. Pick up the phone and give them a call, 134646 for a quote and a chat. And, uh, well, there you go. Thanks, Fletch. Until next time. Good on you. Thanks very much, Mark. Thanks, Fletch. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.